This video is a technical deep dive of sonic wall content filtering. So we will go pretty much through every single option that I personally do believe that most customer will want to use. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solutions. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the links to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. URL filtering serve multiple purpose. The obvious one is pretty much what I called babysitting. And many times I hear customers saying, well, we're grown up, we know how to behave in society, so we don't really need the firewall to do babysitting for different categories of website, which I'm happy to hear that you don't have that issue. But there are other reasons for content filtering. And the there's two, I believe, after the babysitting. The other one is security. Simply because if you don't think about it, there are categories in content filtering that are like malware, right? So there are websites that we know are hosting malware. So maybe your users don't know and that doesn't really fall into standard babysitting. So that's under security is key for content filtering. And as well as, you know, there are categories of website that are more susceptible to have bad content or bad uh, viruses, malware, and any other bad stuff to go through, right? If you, if I ask you to guess which categories of website is more susceptible to trying to do bad stuff or ha harmful content to your machine, is it real estate website or pornography website, right? I think we all agree pornography website may try to get bad stuff through and use some exploit or leverage vulnerabilities on machines and things like this. So good idea to use the security features of and the security aspect of content filtering to block categories of website that we know could be more susceptible to get bad stuff through. And just basic typos as well. That the same about uh, the security because I remember personal story here five, seven years ago, I was doing a webinar here and I was presenting and sharing my screen in front of 40, 50 people roughly. And I wanted to go on Google, very legit website. And well, I forgot the G. I went on google.com and many years ago. And that, by the way, that was back in the day where browsers didn't add a feature called pop up blocker. So that's a while back. And so I went on google.com by mistake and of course the what you expect occur plenty of pop-ups shows up and of course it was plenty of uh, women wearing next to nothing some were wearing a hat that was about it i guess um to protect theirs themselves from the sun in very hot climate they were and of course when you say go by goodbye to four of them well 12 of their colleagues show up and they all have a common thing in, co in common, which is lack of clothing. So it was quite embarrassing to present and share my screen in front of 40, 50 people and keep going on and closing uh, pop-ups and one after another. And of course, when you close one, there's three showing up. So that was a good em five embarrassing minutes uh, to go through. So, you know, just standard typo content filtering can be great to just prevent this. I would have loved that day that the front will kick in and say, well, you're about to access an adult website and me be like, well, now I want to go on Google what the, and then look at the message like, oh, I forgot the G. Thanks, firewall. So that's a great feature of content filtering as well on the security aspect. And the last one personally is just your image. For instance, if you have a company where you have customer coming in, could be a restaurant, a shoe store, an hotel, whatever type of business where you do have customer coming in and ch children could be there as well. It's something that you need content filtering just to protect your image, right? So if you do have someone in your shoe store uh, watching adult movie next to kids, it could be of course, an issue. And imagine if the mom actually is totally upset and go see the TV news and put it into uh, Facebook and everything. So it could you could have some damage control to do. But if you did have content filtering enabled, then you can say, well, we understand someone was browsing inappropriate content in our building and we took the whatever was needed action and, and we just ex ex 
ask him to leave and show him the door. But rest assured that we do have in our network on our guest Wi-Fi features that prevent access to those type of content. And it's been there for many, many years. So he, he was able to access inappropriate content, but it was not through our own infrastructure. He probably did it using the data plan on his phone and legally there is absolutely nothing we can do to interfere uh, with cellular signals. So other than kick the guy out, there is nothing we could do. So that's a much better handling of the situation compared to not having anything and not being able to defend yourself and say, well, yeah, we do have a shoe store and um, uh, there's plenty of kids coming in, but uh, the guy was able to access an appropriate content through our network. We're sorry. So that's not a good thing. So content filtering can really be there just to be able to provide you a reason and handle those uh, image and public relationship um, things. So in this video, we will turn on content filtering and we will go from basic to advanced. So we'll first start with a one size fit all. So you have a 10 user shop and you just want basic content filtering applied to everyone. So we'll start with this, then we'll add exceptions. And then we can we'll also go with Active Directory and say, well, we'll have a no internet Active Directory group, a limited internet Active Directory group and a full internet access Active Directory groups. And we'll do content filtering policies for them. Then we'll also uh, do security for servers because too many times I see people using servers like workstation. So they face an issue, an error code on the server, and now they're browsing forums trying to find out what is that error code. I'm like, well, sorry, it's a server. It's not a workstation, no internet access or extremely controlled internet access. Like you can go on microsoft.com and that's about it. Or, you know, those type of controls. So we'll do this and we'll finish off with uh, a lunchtime policy where we will be more lenient and say, well, you know what? You can go on Facebook, you can go on YouTube, but we will apply bandwidth management. So that will say, let's say maximum 50 megabit of throughput for those categories of website or put a low priority in case of congestion. So that business critical application like Office 365 or site to site VPN have priority on the internet line over YouTube and Facebook and or anything that is not business related during lunchtime. One personal recommendation on content filtering, it could be a very sensitive topic. So if you go ahead on your own and decide to block Facebook, YouTube and all those, well, you may have people that are not happy and your car may burst in flame for no reason, apparent reason. So one wise man told me at the very beginning of my IT career, always put someone between you and your problem. So here we'll just put someone else's car between you and your problem. So what you do, you take the list of categories of content filtering and you go see management and you ask them, here is the list. What do you want to be blocked and who do you want it to block and give them recommendation. We can block based on, um, their department like HR, engineering, R&D, finance, and what's not, or we can block, we can create categories like no internet access, limited internet access, or full access. So get someone in management to make the call. So that's some, then if someone is not happy, you see someone walking with a amazing amount of fuel in a canister going next to your car, you can simply tell him, well, I'm not the one that makes the call. It was John in management and he owns the Mercedes over there, right? So then you can ensure that you're okay. So joking apart, always ensure personal recommendation that you as the IT and men are not making the call of what's blocked and what's not. Just make the call of, of, of course, blocking like malware and bad categories like this, but everything about, you know, Facebook, real estate, shopping, and all those, get someone in management to make the call instead of you doing it. So let's get on it. And there we go. So we will turn on content filtering. We'll go through the different menus and I will do it for different scenarios. So we'll do it for a small company where we do want a one size fit all type of content filtering. So the same filtering for everyone. We just want to block the basic, the obvious, like no adult website and other things of that nature. And then we'll just dig into make it more and more complex for different needs. So maybe some lunchtime policy and different policies for different groups and things like this. So, and also I will first again, like I mentioned, do it for a small organization where we do want a one size fit all. Then I'll 
test it and you will see it will not work. I will show you the little gotchas there is here and there to ensure that it does uh, work when you test it. So just doing it on purpose to help you not fall into those as well. So go into policies, security services, content filter. So as you can see, it is a license feature. So you do need a content filtering license and content filtering is pretty much part of every single security bundles that Sonic will have. Uh, except of course, the uh, when you buy the firewall with support only, well, as the name mentioned, it only has support, which does not include content filtering. So first thing we need to do is to enable content filtering. So turn this switch on and hit accept. So far, pretty easy. Then go into, well, you don't have to, um, just wanna show it here, custom categories. So if you do have a business where maybe some website are well categorized, but for your specific needs, you, you'll be like, well, that website is more this for us. So that's something you can do. You can go here, type in a website, potato.com or whatever it is, and say, well, you know what? For me, potato.com is more, I don't know, a game website or X, Y, Z type of website so that can help you to better categorize website for your own specific needs next we will go into rules and policies and we do have content filtering rules so if we do want only a one size fit all content filtering well there is a default policy here and it's going to work fairly well so what we will do we'll just go through it and i'll show you what we have so it has a name called CFS default policy, which makes sense, it's the default one. Then which zone we want, so source zone, destination zone, so default is pretty good, it's from LAN to WAN, which is pretty much the obvious. Uh, if you did network segregation and you do have multiple zones, which I doubt, because the first thing we do is really a very small organization of like five users, but for bigger organizations, strongly advised to have network segregation. So you may have to use different zone or simply pick all if you want a content filtering to be applied, a one size fit all for the entire organization when you do have network segregation done. But here I'll keep it simple. It's a five user company. Everybody is on the LAN. So it goes from the LAN to the WAN, which makes sense. Then here we can specify source IP addresses to be include. So if we specify IP addresses here, it will only apply to those IPs. So what we can do, there are some that are already predefined. What we can do, I'll just show you what we have here. So you could create one, you give it a name, and then it could be a host, a single IP address. It can be a range of IP, like from 192.168.1.7 to 10 or whatever you want. It could be a network, a slash 24 or something like this. It could be a FQDN and it can also be a MAC address. So I'm just gonna click cancel on this. All I wanted was to show you, you can specify a, a one IP address or a MAC address or a range of IP to be owned that where we only want to apply content filtering to. And here we do have a exclude, so exact same thing, but you know, yeah, apply it to everyone in the LAN except that IP or those IPs. The same thing apply here. We can apply it to users and groups, for instance, in Active Directory. So that is something we will briefly touch later on uh, when we get into more complex setup. But here for one size fit all, you don't really need this. Um, next is a schedule, which is pretty nice. You can say, uh, I want it to be always on. So, you know, no adult website at any time. Uh, but some organization will ask like, well, you know what? I would like Facebook, YouTube, and those to be blocked uh, during business hours. So then I'll show you later in the video, we can do a uh, lunchtime policy where we will unblock YouTube during lunch, but it will be blocked during business hours. So pretty simple, you go into create a schedule, you make it recurring, and then you can specify date and time and days as well. And then content filtering policy will only be applied to this. So that was just a quick overview. We'll get there in a couple minutes. Then we do have the profile and the action. In the profile, um, we cannot edit it here. I'll show you where it is, but you can select the profile you want. So what do I do with adult website, with gambling website, with travel website, car website, shopping and everything? 
And the action is, well, when you set block, what is the deny message you want? Or when you select bandwidth management, well, what is the actual bandwidth you want to be applied? So this is the default one. We will go see that profile and this uh, action here. So go into objects and see we do have the profile object and we do have the content filtering here. So we'll just go see what's the default that we have. So here, as you can see, we do have what are blocked and allowed by default. So see violence, pornography, cult, sex education, and all those. So those are blocked and you got some that are allowed. And I do like that there are some websites that are meant here for security purposes like malware. Something I like at the top here, see allowed URI. So you could, if you want, specify a list of domain in there or a list of complete URL to be allowed or blocked. So we'll create one. So click on create URI list. Here you can select domain. So if I click on add domain and type in potato.com, that means that everything on potato.com slash 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 whatever it is, everything that starts with potato.com in all the sub folders and pictures and everything in there will be included as something to be allowed or URI, then this is a complete URL. So it has to be potato.com slash pictures slash logo dot gif and that specific path will be allowed in that case, that specific picture. So something you may want to work with, we'll get there when we talk about uh, servers because I am a big fan of blocking internet access to your internal servers like Active Directory, right? Active Directory server is not a workstation. So don't use it to go on Facebook or browse any IT forums or anything. It's a server, not a workstation. So we'll get there uh, later on as well. So we do have the allowed URI, the forbidden one. Uh, here you do have kind of the map, how things work. So first we look at allowed URI list first, or do you want to look to a forbidden list first, right? So you tell the firewall which list to look first, because you can add a list of allowed stuff and forbidden stuff. So which one we look at first, forbidden or allowed? Personally, I'm not really playing with those. Um, I'm pretty much using uh, the categories here, except for servers, which we will touch in a second. So that's the default one. As you can see, we do have categories. We do have different action here. Allow, which is pretty obvious, right? That would allow a specific, uh, that will allow traffic to a specific category. BWM stands for bandwidth management, which can be pretty cool to do because later on we'll do a policy for lunchtime. So for instance, I could say, well, yes, unlock YouTube, Facebook, and all non-business related stuff during business hours but we'll give it a low priority or max put a maximum allowed bandwidth for for those so you don't you ensure that those that are working during business hours or site to site vpn or anything that is business grade that need internet access will have good experience that everything will work well without you know having someone's like oh everybody is on youtube so then you cannot work because everything is slow so then what we can do is set low priority for streaming media so then everything else will have priority over youtube when there is a congestion so those are the kind of cool things i'll show you in a second so uh, bandwidth management block pretty obvious confirm this is um, a nice one if you want to avoid typo for instance if you try to access a website that like, I don't know, Microsoft, but you did a typo in Microsoft and you end up on a hacking website or adult website, the confirm could be nice instead of a block. So you could say, well, you're trying to go on Microsoft with a typo, which is known for a malware website. Are you sure you want to go there? Or personal experience when, when I was a consultant in IT, I had a uh, customer that had a small division that were, that were doing background check. And at one point I got a lady that show up in the IT department and all shy and red I was like, can you unlock those websites? And I'm like, well, if your boss is okay with it, then yes, I guess. And then I learned that they do, again, background check for people and they had to do checks on someone uh, that actually worked in a business that was related to something being blocked. So that was 
legitimate request. So what we did in that case, we took, let's say, weapon and we say confirm. So then we say, you know, yes, you can go there, but it's going to be logged uh, and you need to confirm. Yes, I do want to go there and you have reasons to go there. And it's not just a typo or a mistake or anything. So confirm is a nice one as well. And passphrase is simply asking a password, right? That's pretty useful in education. So teachers in school doesn't want kids to go on YouTube during classes. But at one point, the teacher is like, yeah, you guys have an exercise to do. You do need to go on YouTube. So I'll type in the password on your workstation and that will unlock YouTube only for you. So passphrase is another nice one to have. So I would personally recommend you go through again that list and check what you want to be blocked. But I do like the default one. As you can see, uh, everything here uh, is set to block. And those are, you know, maybe sex education. You may want to allow this. Um, but then, oh yeah, one to be careful. We'll play with um, exceptions. And there is also gambling here. So that could be a good example. I didn't thought about it. So we'll just change what I was planning on doing. So gambling, as you can guess, it's pretty much any online casinos or stuff like this, which could make sense to block this during business hours. But one thing you may find annoying is your government lottery board will be blocked. So, you know, if uh, I'm in Quebec, as you probably recognize the accent, uh, here in Quebec, we do have Loto Quebec. And in Ontario, they got the uh, OLG, I believe. So those will be blocked as well, which could be an issue. So what you could do is go into the allowed URI list, create a list, we'll call it gambling, uh, allowed gambling. And I will put the domain, type an ad, and type in Loto Quebec in my case. I don't even know if it's lotoquebec.com or .ca. I believe there's maybe a dash, but you get the point, right? Type in the domain of a lottery website that is, you know, government lottery board that you want um, to be allowed. So see, I got an allowed list, which is my allowed gambling, or you just, you know, maybe you may want to create just one like with the generic name. It's really up to you. So see my list works here. I'm going to say, look at allowed stuff list first, which makes sense. And I have nothing in forbidden. So, so far, so good. So the firewall will look anytime you go on a website, it will look here. Is it part of that list? And here I only have Loto Quebec. And if it's not in that list, it's going to go through categories here. So it's going to block any other gambling website. So that's pretty much what we need to do into the profile object. So we'll just save this. And then we add our action as well. So content filtering action is here. And that's the default one. So remember when I said, for instance, block adult website? Well, this is here. I'm going to define what block is. And in that case, it's pretty much showing a message to the user. So I can click on preview and see it shows me a nice message which is a default one saying, well, sorry, you cannot go on this website. It's going to say, what's the URL, what is the URL, what's the block policy, the IP address, the reason, mainly what's the category. Um, so that's a nice message it has by default. So of course, something nice you could do. I don't know if you, if you are a reseller, I've seen a reseller do something really nice where they change the block message and they put something with their partner logo and they also put a form saying hey if you do believe this website is needed for your work please fill the following form and that form was simply opening a ticket into the partner system and then the partner was contacting the manager and say hey we got David that asked for this website to be unlocked so it really shows for you as a reseller uh, how to improve things and uh, you, you know really step apart from any other competitors you may have so it's a nice way to include your services and your know-how into in the firewall and if you're a customer then well you may just use it as the same way if you have an internal ticketing system or you may want to put your logo or change the language right for French and anything else or any other language you may want. Then when you set passphrase, um, remember into the block allow deny passphrase for what you know what it could set for a specific category. Here you can select actually what is the password and again what is the message we want the user to see. So 
By default, it looks pretty much the same. And you will have a button that will uh, allow you to click and say and type in uh, your password. Sorry. Same story for the confirm button. So again, just the text, you do whatever you want with it. And bandwidth management. So I'll go quick on bandwidth management. I'll put a link in the description box and description box down below uh, to a KB that Sonic will have on uh, bandwidth management. But here I'll show you quick what you could do. Uh, we can create a new bandwidth object and see of course I can give it a name I can say I want minimum bandwidth guaranteed for it I want maximum bandwidth or I want uh, what type of priority right so what we could do what later on uh, we'll do YouTube and Facebook and any other non business related stuff to be unlocked during business hours but we will give it a low priority so if there is plenty of bandwidth available stream in 4k on YouTube I don't care but if there is any congestion or internet line is getting loaded, then YouTube will simply start to lag and 4K will not work. You may have to downgrade to 720p to get it to work well because any other traffic like Office 365, VPN and everything corporate has priority over YouTube. So that's something we'll do in a minute. I'm just showing you uh, around. So here, those are the actions. So again, when you select block, I can say what is the block message I want, what's the passphrase I want, what's the confirm, and bandwidth management I want. So just a little recap, let me go back into my policy. So see here, my content filtering policy, I say apply it to everyone in the LAN. Again, I could select IP addresses to be include or exclude, same for user, a schedule. And those are the two things we look at, right? My profile, if I create new, See, that brings me here where we selected which uh, categories to be allowed block and everything. So get our allowed, bandwidth management, block confirm and passphrase. And that was the profile. And if we go into action, this is where we set, well, when I select blocked, here is what I wanted. So that's the block message. And when I select bandwidth management, here is what I want as bandwidth management. So. Now is time to test and I'm I'm telling you right away it is not going to work and I'm doing it on, I'm doing it on purpose to show you. So see here our default one is using the CFS default profile and let's go see that profile and see what's blocked in there. So as you can see adult website or block. So let's give it a try. And as you can see I'm able to go on playboy.com so it and men could be like well what is going on it's not working well i'll show you why go into security services content filtering and see here we do have exclude administrator well i'm logged in as an admin on the firewall and here i am exclude from content filtering when i'm logged into the firewall which can be pretty handy maybe if you have a very tight control over what people can do and you for instance they can't download anything or very restrict restrictive stuff then it could be nice to just exclude yourself so you go in their workstation you just log into the firewall as the admin then uh, all the web is open to you so it could be very useful but when you test for the first time turn this off and it accept Next, you will try again and it's not going to work again. And I'll show you why. So let's try again, playboy.com and it works. So the second thing is most websites, if, if pretty much all of them are on HTTPS. So the best is to turn on DPI SSL on the firewall and actually be able to decrypt all inspection. So see DPI SSL, SSL client, you can say turn on DPI SSL and apply content filtering to all HTTPS traffic. So that is the best way of doing HTTPS inspection because here not only you will apply content filtering to HTTPS, but you will also apply application control, antivirus, anti-malware, IPS, all the security services will also apply to HTTPS traffic because the firewall will be decrypting it. So I've put a link in the description box down below on a video I've done on how to turn on DPI SSL. So what we could do if you don't want to go through this and you just for now you just want like hit the ground running and at least get content filtering done you can turn on dpi ssl just for https 
you won't get any of those security services working, but at least if you do playby.com on HTTPS, it's gonna get blocked. So go into objects and into content filtering and see that is the default CFS profile. So edit this. Remember, this is where we add all the categories. Well, in the advanced tab, you do have more option and there is one for enable HTTPS content filtering, which is the reason why most websites were working, even though content filtering was on it, was because they were on HTTPS. And by the way, you do have other cool features here, like all the thing about safe search. So if you, the safe search is uh, not something that is under your control, it's what Google or YouTube or Bing, they do themselves consider as being safe or not. So again, you don't have control over what Google cons considers safe or not. But the idea of Google safe search is, for instance, here I've blocked playboy.com. But if I do not have Google safe search on, that means I could go on playboy.com, go into play, uh, go into Google images and search for playboy. And I would see all pictures from playboy website because, and actually, but not because it's because I will be on Google website, right? So uh, those are nice to turn on as well. So for now, I'll just do enable HTTPS and save this. And I'll try again and it works and it's probably because it's cached into my browser. So let's just try another website, sex.com probably exists here. See now sex.com get blocked and we got the deny the standard deny message that we want. So it's a default policy. Here is my IP address. Here is the block reason. So question you may have now that it works. Uh, some may ask like, how do I uh, know in which category a specific website is? So to do this, what I personally do, there is a specific URL, which I always forget. So I just do SonicWall test a site. SonicWall test a site, type in that in Google and there is a KB that shows up. I'll be nice, I'll put that link in the description box down below and it brings you to a link then you can type in, well, Playboy is already type in here, so I'll just do that and then type this here. And it tells me it is a pornography website. So very easy to test different sites. So now that we got content filtering working, we've done our, you know, like I mentioned, a one size fit all block content filtering for not block content filtering, but block basic categories like adult um, and firearm and, you know, all things that we don't necessarily want into our organization. Um, next thing that will obviously happen, and I'm sure you'll see it coming, and I've seen it many times. So you manage, you, let's say you're a reseller or you're just the IT person and you get asked to turn on content filtering, you do it, and within an hour, that person that asks you to turn it on goes and see you and, tell, and tells you, well, yes, thanks for turning content filtering on to everyone like I ask, but um, turn it on for everybody but myself. Classic. So here is what we can do. We go back into our content filtering rule and we do have the, the one we have for everyone. So there's two ways we can do it. Uh, the first one is simply to exclude its IP address, right? So what I would personally recommend is do a DHCP reservation for his MAC address on the firewall so we always get the same IP and exclude him. Of course, the best is always to go with Active Directory integration, but again, I'm just digging into very small organization of five users. They may not have a Active Directory server in there, so there, there's probably no mechanism of authentication. So what we can do is just exclude their IP address. And uh, so we'll do it this way for now. So go into network, DHCP server, we'll see DHCP lease, uh, current leases, sorry. In here, well, it's just a basic setup. It's this firewall, myself and internet. So there is only one, but you may go in here and find out, okay, so this user have this MAC address, so you go cut and paste the MAC address and go here, click on add static entry name. We'll call it the boss 
and we want it to always have this IP, for instance, reservation for this MAC address. And we'll say auto-populate for x0, so it puts all the info for me. That is good. And nothing to do here. No, it has to be out of the DHCP scope, so we'll put uh, 250. So now going forward, the boss will always get this IP address. So then we can go back we can go into objects, address, click on add, create a address object called the boss. The boss reside on the LAN in, oops, that's a MAC address. We'll put the IP address we input in the DHCP reservation. So now we have an address object called the boss. So. Go back in content filtering policy, edit, and the source address exclusion, you just find the address object you created called the boss and hit OK. So see now we do it's it's applied to everyone in the LAN except the bo the, the object we've created called the boss, and it's everything we've set. So I just want to tell, tell you what is going to happen here. So here you do have, you know, one policy, but this, the way content filtering work, it's a fail open. So that means that if we haven't find a policy that match, it will be open. So everything, every website will be allowed. So I personally don't really recommend um, doing it this way. It's if this is what they ask, Fine. I mean, I, then you can always explain them like, well, and it's something I've done in the past as well, right? The customer got to ask me like, oh, um, you need to exclude me from this. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so there are categories of websites that are for security, like malware websites. So is this something you want to have access? Do you plan on downloading malware? Is this something you need for work? And they'll say, well, no, I don't need this. Like, okay, so then that means you can apply some content filtering to them. You just need to be more relaxed. And then you can also go with the other categories like, okay, pornography, is this something you need as well for work during business hours? And chances are I will say no as well. So then you can go with them and, you know, go through all the categories and ask them what they need and what needs to be open. Because here again, if you exclude it, there is a hidden policy that says allow every website for everyone, which may not be what you want and will uh, fix it if that is not something you don't want. So what I would personally recommend is do a different content filtering for the boss. So we will undo what we've done here. So we'll put it back to exclude none. But what we, what we will do, we will create a new content filtering for the boss. So we will click on add, we'll call it CFS for the boss. The boss is on the, on the LAN, it goes to the WAN. Source address to be include, here we just want to include M. So the boss, and this is it, schedule all the time. So here what we can do, we will create a profile for him. Always put names that mean something. So we'll call it CFS profile, the boss. In here, we will we can look with him at what is it? What is it that he spe specifically want? So of course, you know, malware would be nice to remain block, but maybe you want something to be less restrictive. So I don't know, uh, pornography should remain block, I believe, but check with him, you know, we could do things like this, uh, weapon, maybe depending on which country you are, of course, uh, drugs, maybe not gambling, why not? Uh, maybe not, you know, you just go through it and decide uh, what you want to be allowed or not for him. Of course, we will turn on HTTPS as well. And then we click on save. So we create our profile for 
the boss and then the action so when i when we have deny uh or when we set block what is it so if you want to show a different deny message or have different communication for the boss you could create a new action object and have a specific message for him when you say you know sorry you don't get to browse malware website or personally i think the default one will just do perfectly fine so then you can click OK. So something next topic is see now we have two policies and just like pretty much any policies firewall always go from top to bottom. So as you can see here, we have the default that is on top and the one for the boss that is at the bottom. So if it remains that way, it's never ever going to apply the one for the boss because firewall will receive the boss trying to get to a gambling website and firewall will look at okay uh, it's the boss so it's coming from the LAN yes that match it goes to the WAN yes is it anyone yes we're excluding nobody fine uh, is it everyone yes exclude no user perfect is it this time of the day yes okay we got a match so it's gonna block him from going on a gambling website so what you need is this one to be on top generally speaking you put always the most specific stuff at the bottom and then the least specific stuff uh, on the top. So here we do have little arrows where you can change priority. So let's click on this one for the boss and change its priority from number two to priority number one and click OK. And as you can see, it will simply move up. So now CFS for the boss is on top. So that was basic content filtering pretty much almost a one size fit all next let's get more into details because um of course many of you have more specific needs often i've seen customer doing different groups for content filtering they were groups where they had no internet access like if you have a shop and you get people that i don't know they're building engines or whatever it is um you may want to say well those guys don't have internet access period then you may have other group of employee where management is like yeah we'll give them limited internet access and then a privileged group that has no internet uh, limitation so full open internet so that's something i see very often so no internet limited internet and full internet so that's a common use case so it's something uh, that we can do easily so here let me just kill the boss yeah, sorry, kill the policy, not the boss itself. <laughs> um, next, what I'll do is click on add. So here we'll call it no internet. So it's coming from the line as well, or it might be different zone, right? Here, um, again, I've put a link in the description box down below for a video I've done that talks about network segregation, something crucial in security, in my opinion. So, you know, your no internet policy might be for, for people in the shop and a good idea would have been to have a zone called the shop and everything that is part of the shop needs to be on its own network because well, I think we'll all agree if the shop stop working production stop income stop salary stops right so that is crucial the shop should never stop because someone in HR clicked on something it shouldn't so that way we can ensure that the shop that has no internet access are into their own zone and nothing can affect them. So if someone else in HR payroll or a manager or the owner that wants no filtering at all got infected, surprisingly, um, that won't affect production. So that's something crucial to do. So if you do a no internet and you know it's only going to be applied to the people in the shop, so then just pick the zone, the shop, so that will make it easy for you because you don't need to play with IP addresses or groups. So that's what I like about network segregation makes life much easier when you want to do different policies. You just say, well, anything on that network, plain and simple. But if you don't have network segregation or if you do have different people from different groups and different part of the net network, then it's going to be challenging to do it per zone. So what you could say is, you know what, no matter who it in which zone they are as long as they are a member of my no internet group on my active directory domain so it's something i suggest is to turn on active directory integration and single sign-on i'll put a link to a video and as well a uh, kb because i haven't done single sign-on yet in a video so here i do have my 
no internet policy, I will apply it um, going from any zone because the people I've put into that no internet group in Active Directory might be into a different zone. They might be into the shop, they might be into the HR zone, they might be into the land, they might be into the R&D network or any other networks. So from any zone going to the WAN, I'm not going to play with IP addresses because I got Active Directory authentication and single sign-on. So I'll just say people member of the no internet group in Active Directory. I will I apply this to any time and my profile, I will create one. I'll create a profile and again, I'll put names that mean something. CFS profile, no internet. In ERC, we can say block and set to all. So all categories will be blocked. And if you do have little exceptions you need to do, like for instance, the guys in the shop need access to a specific website that is the manufacturer of XYZ product they need, then you do have the URI uh, list here, like the one we've created for gambling. So you could create another one that will allow only very specific website that they need for their work. So that's something I've seen uh, commonly as well. And of course, turn it on for HTTPS as well. So here we've blocked all category except maybe a couple of domains that we could have uh, set here. So let's click on save for this. And the action, again, you could, if you want, create a custom action, but here we only set deny and we do have that basic deny message. So that will work. We'll just use the default action that has the built-in default deny message. Again, feel free to change it, make it your own, put a form in there, uh, put your own logo, whatever you want. So we got one, then pretty easy to do the other one. So again, it's going to be um, limited internet. Of course, don't do typos, always better. Again, I'll pick all because I may have people that are in any different zones, but are a member of that limited internet access group. So it's going to be destination the one, not play with IP addresses and my limited one. In my profile here, I can create a new profile, right? Because that is different website that I want to be blocked for them. So we'll call it, just want to make sure I keep the same name. So here I've created CFS profile. So let's call it CFS. CFS profile limited internet. And here we may change, uh, I don't know, it's really up to you, right? Uh, kid friend, I don't know, you really do whatever the boss want, like I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the video, put someone between you and your problem, make sure you're not the one making the call of what's allowed and what's not. So, you know, maybe the boss says, you know what, I don't want them to do real estate, no joking website, no sport, they can do their hockey pool another day and uh, auctions and, you know, whatever they want, so. And just and again make sure we enable it on HTTPS and the action will be the default one again because I don't want to change that deny message the one we have is good enough and finally the one for full internet new profile full internet In here, we can leave it like this and, you know, maybe keep some stuff blocked like malware. Good idea to keep that blocked. Like I mentioned, content filtering is not only some babysitting, but there are uh, things about, you know, it being able to increase the security of your network, right? So there are websites you may want to say, you know what, we there is stuff that are questionable. So instead of blocking it or just allowing it without you know, any further security, we will just do confirm. It's something I like, um, you know, cult culture, maybe sex education, we'll say allow, um, swimsuit. Yeah, sure. Why not weapon? We might want to say confirm depending again of your country, uh, drugs, confirm nudism. Uh, yeah, confirm or your pornography block. Add content, yeah, keep that block, 
confirm so and here confirm so you know i like the idea of you know you're about to access a weapon website or a drug website is this really what you want and then people member of the full internet may you know think twice like yeah do i really want to go on a uh, swimsuit website during business hour do i maybe yeah well you know what i'll do it at home right so it allowed the people to have a second thought about it or and if they just need it like yeah sure let me go i don't care so you give them the option and again like i mentioned don't be the one making the call suggest that idea to management and they are the one making the call so save this oh and i forgot to turn on https in this one so you know, normally would say go back in there and uh, enable HTTPS, but I've done it so many times. I think you remember now how to do it. So see, I do have all my policies and see the same problem occur here, right? The default one is at the very top for going from the LAN to anyone. So that would simply defeat the purpose of those one here unless they are into a different zone than the one. So what I'll do, I'll take this one and I'll move it all the way down. So I'll change it from priority one to priority four. Now see, that works better. And remember I mentioned content filtering is a fail open. That means if we haven't found any policy that works or that could be applied, everything will be allowed. I'm not a fan of it, so I personally like using the default one as my the one at the bottom, my catch-all. So I can now be, instead of a fail open, meaning allow everything if you haven't found anything, I like the fail close approach. So the CFS policy will be my fail close. So I will edit it, edit it and I'll say, you know what, for all zone going to the WAN, any user, any groups, all the time, so that one will apply to anyone and then you decide which one you want to be applied right could be bare minimum of having one that blocks the obvious stuff that people don't want to don't want to get so what we've done here is my three groups and i like this approach as an it person when i was managing uh networks for different organization because here it's integration with active directory so when there is a new employee that comes in I always get that manager that comes in and say, hey, we're hiring a new guy called XYZ. Make sure you get the exact same access as John. So then you're like, okay. Then the cool thing is just to go in Active Directory, look at group membership for John, and you see that John is member of limited internet. So then you know that that new guy will also have limited internet. So you just do all the access right in Active Directory rather than having to go in the firewall or into any different servers you may have. So everything is based on Active Directory groups. So works great. So new employee, you add it into the group of Active Directory. You never go into the firewall, so you can just change access to different users as you want. Next, the other one that I like to do is um, prevent access to internet for servers. Because depending on the size of your organization, sometimes it's just IT that deals with server, but sometimes there are other departments that handle their own server, again, depending on the size of your organization. But if you have thousands of employees, for sure you have servers that are handled by non-IT people. So, and too many times I see those servers being used as workstation and they're browsing, like if they face an issue, they'll open the browser and look around on different forums trying to find a solution. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but servers are not workstation. No internet access for servers. So here's how I personally do it. I call it server. Oh, actually, before doing this, so I'll go into objects and create different servers. For instance, I'll create Active Directory server. It's on the LAN or any zone. It has this IP and I'll just create another one. Pretty handy that window stays open. Uh, let's say, I don't know, HR server. And HR has 41 as an IP. And of course, create the one you have. Um, if they are in a specific network, it make it easier because you can say just a network and it's that subnet slash 24 are the servers or it could be in a different zone, which again makes everything easier when you do network segregation. 
or it could be just a range of IP, like oh, servers are from IP 40 to 50, so make it easier. But in my case, I just created two objects. You can change the view for custom, and then it shows you the object that you created. So we got the Active Directory server in my HR server. Next, go into address group, click on add, call it servers, and add this one in HR hr so i have a group called servers and i do have my two servers in here then we'll go back into content filtering i will add a content filtering servers it's from where wherever servers are going to the one and it will include only my servers it's a group so groups are at the bottom servers and it's going to be all the time. I will create a specific profile for them. CFS profile server. And what I will do, it's really again up to you. You, you know more your environment than me. But what I do, I set everything to be blocked. HTTPS as well. And then here you may create different domains that are needed. For instance, here you could go and say, we'll call allowed server, allowed for servers, and domain, we'll add, let's type in, let's say microsoft.com. So, and you can add more domains that servers are allowed to go when they want to go on the internet, because maybe there are services or stuff in the background, like the HR server, may need, maybe they need to connect to a website um, to process payroll or whatever it may be. So you may list those. Yes, it can get time consuming, but uh, to me, that's called doing your job. It's security, it's stuff you need to do to ensure that things don't go south sometimes. So I got my allowed for server, I block all categories. so. When a server trying to get to the internet, it will look, is it part of the allowed website? Yes, go on. No, it's not, then sorry, you don't get to it. And click save. And again, we can use the default action, which will just pop up the default message saying, hey, you cannot get there. And that one C is at the bottom. Again, that will most likely not work because my default catch all is here. So what you could do is move that one personally to the top. So we'll make it first because what may happen is you get someone that logs into a server, let's say someone in HR, but that person from HR is part of limited internet. So if this policy is first, then Firewall will say, oh, sure, you're on any zone in any IP, you're a member of this group, and sure, go on, right? So that could be an issue. But here, since we've put the servers first, we've list, well, if it's the IP of a server, no matter who the user is, no, we block internet. So personally, I put the server policy first, and then my no internet, limited internet, and full internet uh, after and then my default which is the catch all so I can kind of convert uh, that fail open of, of content filtering to something that where I have a catch all that will absolutely catch everything and finally we will do one for lunchtime because maybe uh, management is like yeah sure that's what I want during business hours but I do want some specific stuff to be allowed during lunch so We'll create one called lunchtime or maybe just out of business hours, right? Outside business hours. It's for all zone going to the WAN. It could be pretty much anyone. Um, all groups, maybe they will. the management will be like, yeah, during lunch, pretty much everything open except the obvious. Um, schedule see there is one called work hour there's plenty that are set by default which you could always go see what they are and decide if you want to use them but just for training purposes we'll create our own so outside business hours trying to not do as many typos as I do so it's gonna be recurring 
in we'll say from noon from one whoops sorry from lunch to well so from noon to 1 p.m during business days and then we can add more right so if business start at 8 a.m then i can say so starting from zero until let's say eight so if you arrive early at work on any work days then sure go on you can have uh internet and then past 5 p.m so 5 p.m until midnight on business days and then i can add weekends as well yeah so weekend from here to there so here we do have work days during lunch work days before business start after hours business days and just weekend so that's something you can do i like the fact you can put multiple in there so just save this And now I'll pick my outside business hours. Then I can create a profile. You can always reuse one, right? So if you feel like, yeah, the limited one is good, or actually what we should do is really create one for lunchtime. So create one for lunchtime. Again, you can specify some URLs. And what I like is, for instance, that's not something I've done, but maybe the limited internet has no YouTube, no Facebook, no nothing. Then we can say, you know what? We will allow them, but we will limit bandwidth. So multimedia, we'll just do bandwidth management, uh, social, personal and dating. Yeah, why, why not? Why not? Bandwidth management. Social media. Bandwidth management, and you, you get the point, right? All websites that are normally blocked during business hours, you want to unblock them during outside business, like lunchtime. And but the thing we want is to control bandwidth. So if during lunch there are people that are actually working and use Office 365 or site to site VPN or any business stuff or anything else, then we want business related stuff to have priority over non business stuff like Facebook. So we set bandwidth management to different categories. Click on save. Again, I forgot the HTTPS, make sure you turn it on. Then my action here, I cannot use a default one because there is nothing set for bandwidth management. So let's create a new one. Let's call it lunchtime or outside business hours, whatever the name you want. And here we are going to set our bandwidth management. So we can select limit bandwidth for upload or download or boat uh, here i'll just do boat and i'll create address object and call it lunchtime here you can set guaranteed bandwidth which we don't want right i'm not going to put guaranteed bandwidth for youtube and facebook if you do want you can say well we'll set maximum bandwidth that's something you may want to do let's say you have a 200 meg internet line you may want to say you know what no more than 50 meg worth of on business, not non-business related stuff, like all the categories we've set for bandwidth management, which was uh, social media, personal and dating and other stuff. Or what you could do uh, is also to set priority. For instance, here I'll put it at lowest and just say drop. So it will, everything that's trying to take too much bandwidth, the firewall will just drop the packet, forcing a retransmit and you know keep communication um, down. So we'll just select it here. So see now in my profile, I do have some bandwidth management. I You can put again, maximum bandwidth or um, change priorities in the event of a congestion. 
So I'll put a description, I'll put, I'll put a link in the description box down below about bandwidth management for a link of a KB. But if you do apply like maximum bandwidth of 50 megabit, you have nothing else to do. The firewall will just say, well, there is 50 meg, so I, I stop there. But if you want to say, well, put low priority when there is a congestion, because of course it's never going to apply if there is no congestion, right? If you have a 500 meg internet line, and you want to put low priority on stuff, but you only have 200 mag needed out of 500 available, there is no priority to do, right? It's, we're not even using half of what we have, so there is no priority to do. The prioritization will occur when we start to reach the maximum uh, bandwidth that content filtering can provide, uh, the maximum bandwidth that your ISP have. So that's something you need to set, and I'll show you quick, and of course refer to the KB to get it all, because it's not a, uh, bandwidth management video it's only for content filtering but pick your one interface and into the advance it's here you can set what is your upload and download speed so when the firewall reach this it will start applying priority and put low priority on facebook for instance during lunchtime so go back here and see my outside business hours is at the bottom again that's an issue because this, this one is going to be always applied, right? This one is the exact same. See, all zone, all zone, when, when, any, any, none, none, all, all, none, none. But that one is always on. So the firewall will go always top to bottom. We'll see, okay, someone is someone wants to go on YouTube during lunchtime. So that doesn't apply because it's not a server. It's someone member of no, it's not someone member of no internet. Oh, it's someone member of limited internet. Okay, let's use this one and block Facebook during lunchtime, which is not what we want. So we need to take this one and move it up. Personally, I would move it to the second position right below servers. So see what's going to happen. If someone from the limited internet wants to go on YouTube during work hour, the firewall will look at that policy and say, well, it's not a server. It will look at this one, like, well, it doesn't qualify. It's not outside business hours. It's not someone from no internet. Oh, it's someone from limited internet, and it's from this zone, blah, blah, blah. Its schedule is always on, so fine. I apply this policy, and I block uh, Facebook. But if it's during business, if it's during lunch, then the firewall will again look at the first, like, no, it's not a server. Oh, yeah, it's someone from any group, and it's, from some, it's coming from any zone. Oh, yeah, and it's outside business hours, so... Fine, I will apply this. I will allow YouTube and Facebook, but apply bandwidth management to ensure that business critical application like Office 365 have priority over YouTube. So that's pretty much it. So hopefully you find it interesting. I'm looking at the camera and I'm uh, almost at an hour. So that was quite a lengthy video, but I truly hope it was interesting. So. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one. Have a good day.